Hello everyone, it's Wilson here. We have two lines that are parallel here. Okay, so how do we check that they're parallel? You can see that uh, the coefficient of t, if you take each of the coefficients of the t and multiply by negative one, and then you are going to get the coefficient of the s. As you can see, if you multiply this negative three by negative one, you are going to get three. Multiply this by negative one, you get one. Multiply by negative one, we get negative two. So you can see that those two lines are parallel. And when two lines are parallel, we can actually have a plane that's passing through those two lines, right? So we have a plane. So let me just draw the plane here. So the plane that we are drawing. Okay, so we have two lines that are parallel. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Actually, it would be a good idea to just, just label them in different colors right here. So <clears throat> what happens is that let's say if you have a line that's in red, and the other one that's in, let's say, yellow. Okay, so that's what happens. And then our goal here is to find the plane that contains both lines. Okay, so how do we do that? Um, <clears throat> so going back to the idea for finding a plane is that whenever we need to find the equation of plane, we need two things. One is that we need a point that lies in the plane. The other one is that we need the normal vector that it's perpendicular to the plane. And at this point, we actually have none of that, right? So um, we'll need to take some steps to find that. One easy way is that because we know the two lines already, so that means we just need to obtain three points that will lie in the plane by using those two lines. And then from there, what do we do? We use those three points to form two vectors that are lying in, in the plane. And then we take the cross product and then we can get the normal vector. Is that okay? So that's the big picture. And now let's actually get started. So um, what happened is that we can just find three points in the plane. So how do we find the three points? Uh, easy way is to just plug in some T value. Okay, and then we can find some points on the line that's in red, that's red, okay? So um, let's say if you wanna find the point right here, for example, let's say if you plug in t equals zero, then you can find point. And so um, what do we have here? So let t equals zero, okay? And then what happens? Then if we plot the zero in here, then we can get a point. Okay, so we are going to, uh, it will output a vector, but then that's the position vector that's starting from the origin to whatever point that your, uh, that your vector is pointing at. So in this case, we are going to just, just look at this. The vector actually becomes two minus three times blank, and then minus blank, and then one plus two times blank. Is that okay? Our vector looks like this. And then we are going to plug in the zero in there. Is that okay? And then so from there, what are we getting? We are going to get, um, so two, okay. And then zero. And then what is the last component, which is one. Is that okay? And so the point that we are getting here, that tells us that, that the point is actually um, two, zero, one. So that's one point here. Is that okay? So we have the point at t equals zero, and then we get this point. So we can say that, okay, so this point is two, zero, one. Okay. Yeah. Okay, now um, next point, what we can do is to just plug in another easy value for t. You can plug in any value for t, right? But then just choose t to be one, and then that will give us another value. Okay, so that means maybe right here, okay, t equals one, okay, and then we can find the point. And so in this case, we just write down the vector again. So two minus three blank, and then minus blank, and then one plus two times blank. And then now this time we plug in the one in there, and then we do our calculation. And so um, two minus three, so we are just going to get minus one here and then minus one, and then that's three, right? So we get minus one, minus one, and then three. Yeah, so this is the position vector. That means this initial point is at the origin, and then its terminal point is actually pointing at the point that's given by the three components. So the point that we have is 
negative one, negative one, and then three. Is that okay? So we get two points. Now it's not a it's not okay to uh, find another point by plugging another uh, a t value into the first line function. It's really because then in that case you are going to get two vectors if you use those three points that you are getting, and then you are finding the finding those two vectors. Then those two vectors are actually lying the same line, so that's not going to help with the normal vector because when you take the cross product, you are going to get the zero vector. Is that okay? So this time we need a third point, and this third point must be lying in the other line. Is that okay? So that means the point that we are getting right now must be lying in the uh, in the yellow line. So we just choose S to be zero. Oh, by the way, I should just label this point right here, which is, uh, what is that? That's negative one, negative one, and three. Is that okay? So one more point, and then we let S to be zero. And then now if we let S to be zero, then we are going to get, let's see. So we have three times blank and then four plus blank and then five minus two blank. Is that okay? And then you just plug in the zero into all the blanks and then you do the calculation and that would be easy calculation here because that's really just, just multiplying by zero. So you just get zero here, then you get four here, and then we get what? What do we get here? Five here? Yeah, so zero, four, five. So our point that we are getting here would be zero, four, and five. So we get three points and they do not lie on the same line. And in this case, what happens? Then we can actually just use them to form uh, the norm, uh, two vectors that when we cross them, we get the normal vector. Is that okay? So this goes back to a problem that we try to find the equation of a plane that's given by, uh, that's determined by three points. Is that okay? That's lying in the plane. Okay, so now um, what do we do? We can just label those points as, um, we can call this point A, call this point B, call this point C, and then we can just form two vectors. So what do we have here? So A, B, Okay, let's form the vectors. A, B is going to be what? What is that? So now A, B means B is being the terminal point. A is the initial point. So we got to use B subtracting the A, right? So that means we subtract the corresponding components of A from B. So we get negative 1 minus 2. So we get, well, let me just put them down. Negative 1 minus 2, okay? And then negative 1 minus 0. And then three minus one, so we get three minus one. And then we are going to be getting like the three, like the one, and then two. But okay, so we have our first vector that's lying the plane. And then the other one, the other one is the AC. Okay, so I'm just going to use, <clears throat> I'm just going to use uh, C being the terminal point and A is the initial point. So we got to do zero minus two, right? and then four minus zero, and then five minus one. Okay, so subtract the corresponding components, and then we are gonna get the, uh, the second vector that's lying the plane. So we get like the two, that's four, that's four. Is that okay? So right now what happened is that we have those two vectors, we can simply just start uh, taking the cross product and then we can get the normal vector. Okay, so taking the cross product, which is AB cross AC. Okay, so that means uh, we cross, so imagine that we have the, you can just imagine that there is the IJK at the top. IJK at the top, then you can, you form a three by three determinant right here. Yeah, so that actually, I. I line them up this way on purpose because I don't need to actually write out my three by three determinant. I can just do it right here immediately. So cross out the first row, cross out the first column, then we get a two by two determinant, which is negative one times four minus four times two. Is that okay? So we do this, the calculation right here. So we get negative four and then minus eight. Is that okay? So that's our first component. And then for the middle component, don't forget that there is an extra minus sign that you need to just put in the front. So I'm just going to put it first. And then I put in parentheses, and then I cross out the first row, 
second column, I get negative like 3 times 4, we get negative like 12. And then subtract negative like 2 times 2, so we get, we add the 4. Okay, and then last component, crossing out the first row, third column, and then we are going to get negative like 12 minus negative 2 times negative 1, so we are going to get positive 2, so minus positive 2. <clears throat> that okay? So we have, uh, yeah, so negative like 12 and then minus 2, right? So we get minus 2, so we just get that here. And then what do we get here? So our normal vector would be, let me see, so negative like 12 right here. And then this is negative like 8. Negate the negative 8, so we get positive 8. And then this would be negative 12 minus 2, so we are going to get um, negative 14. So we get the normal vector. We also have uh, three points that we can use for the plane, right? So we only need one of those points. So we can choose the first point, point A, and then we use the normal vector, and then we can write down the plane equation. Is that okay? So finally, the plane equation. Okay, so the plane, the plane equation would be what? Would be using the normal vector. So, I mean, using that normal vector, like the 12, okay, and then x minus 2, and then uh, plus 8, and then y minus 0, okay? So x minus 2 coming from this 2 right here, and then y minus 0 coming from here, and then z minus 1, as you can see. So minus 14, and then z minus one and then that's equal to zero yeah so basically we are finished we already have the equation um but it would actually be a good idea sometimes to just simplify the equation if you want you can simplify it so um let's see if you simplify what happens you are going to get lay the 12x plus 24 plus 8y minus 14z and then plus 14 is equal to zero. So if we keep going with the calculation right here, moving the constant turns to the other side, so the 24 and then the 14, what do we get here? 24 plus 14, that's 38, right? So you move it to the other side, that's like the 38. So we are gonna get like the 12x um, plus 8y, and then minus 14z is equal to, so this is 24 plus 14 is 38, right? So 4 plus 4 is 8, 1 plus 2 is 3, so 38. And then it's positive 38 on the left side, so if you move it to the other side, you get negative 38. And then because you can see that um, those coefficients of x, y, z, including the constant term, are all even, so we can divide everything by negative 2 to just simplify the equation furthermore, which will give us, if you divide by negative 2, it will give us the final answer, which is uh, 6x, Okay, divide by negative 2, we get minus 4y. And then divide by negative 2, we get positive four, uh, positive 7z. And then divide by negative 2, negative 2 would be uh, positive 19. So we get the final equation here. Yeah. The final answer here. Is that okay? So that's it for this problem. To help make math learning available to everyone, please share my videos to others and subscribe my channel. It will give me support to make more videos. I want to work together with you to help students and children learn math more easily. Okay, thank you for watching.